Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my Storm fans out there. This is your captain speaking. We are heading towards stormy waters. A storm is brewing. The sky is dark. If you give me just one moment to make sure that all of you know about this stream, I'm going to start promoting things on Twitter, our Discord, and a couple of Facebook groups as well. If you'll hold with me just one second, we're going to get this stream started soon. Alrighty, hello everybody. Welcome to tonight's stream. We're going to be playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils, a classic legacy staple, one of the original combo decks in the format, and one of the most well performing over the many years. I believe that in GPs it has won the most out of any um, combo deck out there. Uh, so we're gonna be running it back to a classic, a little bit of a, a little fun time today. Uh, welcome everybody, I see Tyler, uh, hell, hell yeah. Oof, oof. Uh, Spicy MTG and Jeremy, early birds get the worm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so we're gonna talk about this awesome four color Ad Nauseam Tendrils deck. This is white as opposed to green, um, much in the same way that the Epic Storm is exploring white at the moment. So we can call this want. Uh, girls just want to have fun. I just want to have fun. We are playing white ant or want. Um, it's going to be really, really nice. I'm looking forward to it. Let's dive in. Some of the things that we've got in this deck is gonna, are going to be um, pretty special. I'm looking forward to it. So if you are not aware, Ad Nauseam Tendrils is one of the, we'll say two main storm combo decks in Legacy. Um, there are certainly many others, Black Saga Storm, Ruby Storm, the Epic Gamble. There's a lot of other options out there, but the two that are the most well-known are Ad Nauseam Tendrils and the Epic Storm, which you're all aware of the Epic Storm. You're probably also aware of Ad Nauseam Tendrils. So this is a deck that leans in on a lot of the synergies between Lion's Eye Diamond and Infernal Tutor. So Infernal Tutor is a kind of stepped down version of Demonic Tutor. Uh, it reads, reveal a card from my hand, search my library for a card with the same name as that card, reveal it and put it in my hand, then shuffle my library, right? However, it has this keyword hellbent 
And if I have no cards in my hand, instead I can search my library for any card. I can tutor up any card, put it into my hand, just like Demonic Tutor. So how do I get Hellbent? Well, I can do it naturally by casting all of the spells in my hand, or I can actually use Lion's Eye Diamond. So I can cast Infernal Tutor, maintaining priority as I do, cracking the Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding my hand and adding three mana of any which color I want, uh, want. <laughs> um, and then when Infernal Tutor resolves, it sees that I have no cards in my hand and I can demonic tutor, if you will, for anything. Um, in this case, our tutor targets are the engines of our deck, Ad Nauseam, Past in Flames, or some tutors, Wish Claw Talisman and Infernal Tutor itself, we can tutor chain. Um, and obviously our win condition, Tendrils of Agony, the best storm spell. So that's going to be one of the primary synergies of this deck. Um, so that's going to be, uh, wh Jason, why is Infernal Tutor better than Demonic Tutor? It is not. Demonic Tutor is banned in Legacy, so we cannot play this premier tutor, uh, the best tutor in Magic, some might say. We have to settle for a little bit of a downgrade in Legacy. So um, how do we get to all of these storm spells uh, to make sure that Tendrils of Agony is lethal? Well, we have a bunch of rituals, dark ritual and uh, cabal ritual, which is one of the main things that separates the epic storm from ad nauseum tendrils. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal. We have our cantrips, Ponder and Brainstorm. We have ad nauseum as an engine, Past in Flames as potentially the main engine of the deck, actually. And we can build up a whole bunch of storm, cast our spells all over again, and even actually a classic here, Reign of Filth, until end of turn, lands you control gain, sacrifice this land, add one black. So in a, in a situation where I've got some more lands, maybe I'm a little bit flooded, Rite of Flame can allow me to boost those land drops that I've made into a dark ritual or a cabal ritual of their own. So, um, yeah, Shuffles, you are correct. I made a couple of choices in my deck selection. You were very helpful, actually, in, in helping me with some of these things. Uh, Preordain and Duress, two things that are not very good right now. Legacy does not look kindly on the past very often. Duress and Preordain being two of the cards that have been kind of left in the dirt. This is a little bit of a nostalgia for me. Okay, uh, Ad Nauseam Tendrils gets a little bit of a bad rap for being played by nostalgic players um, and not ones that are innovating. I think that there's a lot of innovation in the Ad Nauseam Tendrils community. Uh, I think that it looks like an interesting space to build in. However, I wanted to look into kind of the style of deck that um, got me interested in the legacy format with Cyrus Corman Gill, Ad Nauseam Tendrils. I watched him stream a lot. Uh, they were awesome streaming, uh, Preordain and Duress being key interaction and cantrips for that. Uh, Never Mulligan or whatever um, you want to think about when you look back on those those memories. Um, so that's why Duress and Preordain are in the deck right now um, as mostly nostalgia. But we do have some new cards here. Um, and this is actually a, a well-performing list. There was a player that performed well 3-1 to prelim with this list, which is where I kind of pulled this from. Um, underscore INF underscore is their username on Magic Online. And they were playing a white ant list. Um, Orm's Chant, obviously I'm a TES player. Orm's Chant is an old favorite of mine and a great protection spell to pair with our five discard spells. 
We also have prismatic ending in the sideboard and an extra silence as removal or extra protection, right? Um, and then you obviously see it sitting right here. Uh, we haven't played this card since the release of Phyrexia, all will be one, but the Mycosynth Gardens. If you're unaware, this is a land sphere. Tap, add one colorless. It also has an activated ability. One tap, add one mana of any color, so it can filter our mana. Mana filtering in a four color deck seems fine. And then X tap. The Mycosynth Gardens becomes a copy of target non-token artifact you control with mana value X. This is particularly good because I can copy Lion's Eye Diamond. So just by tapping it, I don't have to pay any mana into this ability because X can be zero. I can copy a zero drop artifact, Lion's Eye Diamond in this case, to boost my mana potentially for an Infernal Tutor to find an Ad Nauseam or a Past in Flames or the Tendrils of Agony. We'll see. Uh, shuffles. Uh, Paradise Lost. Yeah, honestly. Paradise Lost would be a fantastic addition to Magic Online. I know that Daybreak Games is doing a great job with managing Magic Online when they took over from Wizards of the Coast. It has been, or whatever company was managing before, I'm not sure but they've been doing a really good job. I do know that they inherited quite a backlog and they're working through it as best they can. Um, I'm assuming that they're going to prioritize playable cards uh, as opposed to going through each set and knocking out one set at a time. Um, I know that they did that with the initiative cards, things like that uh, have made their way onto Magic Online. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let's see. Jason, yeah, Demonic Tutor is banned. Uh, restricted in Vintage. Uh, vintage, the, the next step up, is the format that um, cards get restricted in, uh, where you hear about people playing restricted cards like Black Lotus or unrestricted cards like um, a Bazaar of Baghdad, right? Uh, those are going to be the really upper echelon of where cards go to die um where strategies can live and you can play whatever you want because you have a lot of powerful cards to back it up um so oh i'm glad that you're here jason no worries about that i'm glad that you're on spring break i'm glad that school has been uh, pretty good busy that's never a bad thing right but um you're here you're hanging out no worries so let's see, Pia's Revolution not to be bugged. Oh, uh, Pia's Revolution, that's the, from Aether Revolt. Um, I'm not gonna remember what that card is, but that's all right. I don't have a card fetcher, this isn't Twitch, right? I can't do that. Um, certain things are a little bit of a downgrade from Twitch, but I like, I like streaming on YouTube a little bit better. So I think that we've introduced this deck as well as possible can talk a little bit about you know 10 cantrips that's quite a lot seven protection spells that's quite a lot um we have a lot of mana not quite as much mana as say the epic storm which has things like mox opal and chrome mox although shuffles is playing a chrome mox uh and actually doing a little bit better job at meshing the the explosive power of the epic storm and the um I mean, Cabal Ritual is such such a powerful ritual. Uh, we didn't talk about this, but it's two mana, add black, black, black. Um, it's kind of like a pyretic ritual or a desperate ritual if you're familiar with modern, right? It is plus one mana. If I have Threshold, instead add five black. Um, or, excuse me. Um, yes, that's five. I can't. Yes, five black. Instead, if I have Threshold, seven or more cards in my graveyard. So... Cabal Ritual, spend two, get five. That's plus three mana. You're talking about Black Lotus. We got four of them right here if we have Threshold and we can only crack for black. So um, I think that this is also really, really fun. Cabal Ritual being such a powerful ritual spell. Uh, usually we only see that with Rite of Flame number three uh, from the Epic Storm, right? Plus three, that's quite a lot. Really, really fun um, now, obviously, our mana base, we have two basics, which means that I get to flex on my basic choices, uh, Euro promo basics, 
And then we've got one of each volcanic island scrubland, tundra, underground sea. We'll see how this mana base works. Uh, I think that basics are going to be a safe bet against something like Delver. We have a little bit of a more strict blue-black deck um, than uh, what I would suggest is a truer four-color deck. This Past in Flames is the only red card. Well, I guess the FNT the Warrens, right? But um, this is kind of a three-color deck with the, um, with it being Esper, uh, and then we're kind of splashing for Past in Flames. So let's get started. I've got a league queued up here. Um, we're going to start a league match. If you like what you're seeing and you would like to support us, hit the like button, comment in chat, tell me what your favorite thing about Ant is, uh, why you like the deck, and what kind of power you think it gives you. I'm going to, uh, actually, you can already see the description. Uh, you have a link to a Moxfield deck list. You can check the link out as well. And then if you're watching on YouTube later on, there's going to be a pinned comment and you can rent this on Card Hoarder. And the links are below for a TCG player as well. And it'll auto populate your cart with all of the cards that you need to buy this deck here. So let's start off with uh, getting queued up. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you can support us um, with uh, some of your help. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsforum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsforum.com slash donation dax that's enough for now let's play some magic all right it's not quite time to combo yet but being coming a youtube member is a great way to support us you get really cool emotes that you can spam in chat that's always really fun to see um it is a it serves as a consolation prize whenever i die to my own ad nauseum um you can you can throw in a sad nos we don't have a glad nos ad nauseum doesn't ever work like that um not when I'm casting it anyway. I McKinley my Nazas quite a bit. Actually, I I actually probably screw up my Echo of Eons more often than I screw up my Ad Nauseums, but that's neither here nor there. We don't have to worry about that. We're not playing Echo of Eons tonight. So I would I do want to, uh, yeah, Shuffle's got it. And speaking of, that was what I was going to say. I do want to give a big thanks to uh, quite a bit of the Discord community. If you're not aware, we have an awesome storm community combo community on discord there's a link in the description below i think that there should be anyway and um there's a legacy subsection and we've got some subsections for each kind of deck legacy ant legacy tes uh, legacy the epic gamble things like that and the ad nauseum tendrils community is really awesome they were helping me trying to pick out some of the decks that I wanted to play tonight and um, it was really pretty uh, pretty nice to get to chat with them and, and get some of their input. Some some people that know a lot more about this kind of a deck than I do. So uh, Shuffles is actually one of the people that were able to help me. We're playing up against a Bomb Diggity. Uh, do I have Legacy 4 Horseman Raiment? I don't. I uh, haven't done that yet. Uh, if I ever want to just say sayonara to the stream, I'll play Four Horsemen as my last stream, my last hurrah, and that'll be it. Um, okay, we're actually doing pretty good. We have one land, we have a couple of ponders to find things, and then we have mana, 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 and an infernal tutor. I'm going to keep this. This is pretty good. We can rely on these ponders to find what else we need, and we can actually start off on a basic Mm, well, hold up. I do think that we're going to start off on a basic. I need another land to actually get started, and I want to have some mana under me before I get caught with my pants down uh, with a wasteland. So we're getting a basic island and hitting that ponder. Yeah. Okay, we're shuffling this one. Wishclaw Talisman. A good card, don't get me wrong. Um, we are playing the Wishclaw Talismans in Ad Nauseam Tendrils, but I wish it was a land right now. 
Um, what's Four Horsemen? Oh boy, Jason. Four Horsemen is a deck that is banned in paper play, but you can actually play it online because of the Magic Online chess clocks. It is a it is a deck that loops with Emrakul um, and Narcomoebas and Dread Returns in such a way that it will statistically win at some point. Uh, you just kind of loop, 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 loop your deck over and over and over again until you hit these cards. You mill your, your deck in a particular order, which is not guaranteed. Um, but um, in paper, you stall. Um, the deck stalls and you can't actually proceed. Um and uh, it's banned in paper play. But since you have chess clocks online, then you actually can. Um, you know what, I actually probably want to thought seize here. Oh, okay, cool. They're, they're thinking that I'm passing because I was gonna pass to my second main because I just clicked without thinking. Uh, talking about four horsemen. Um, so they're gonna bobble me, see something that's completely unnecessary because I'm gonna shuffle it away and get a swamp. I am wasteland proof at the moment. Ah, good afternoon, Stephen. Welcome, welcome to uh, Want, the stream where we play Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Look at that, look at that card that I don't care about. Okay, minor misstep is not hitting any card in my hand. And what I actually kind of want to do is hit take this Brainstorm because that's a card that I know is going to change the texture of their hand. Everybody says texture of the hand with Brainstorm, but it's actually true. I know what I need to beat. It's a minor misstep. So I'm going to take that Brainstorm and I'm going to plan around beating minor misstep. Jidem, hello. Uh, Horseman Loop is discarding Dakmore Scavage. Yeah, the Gitrog monster is definitely um, a a four horseman like deck in CEDH. Um, and I guess you can do it in regular play as well. Okay, well that's a minor misstep target. However, this is not. Are they going to hard cast a daze? Is that one of the two cards that I didn't know about? I wasn't going to play into... Uh, oh, they are. Okay. I was going to play into a daze, excuse me, because I knew the majority of their hand and the two cards that they were drawing were blind. I figured that it was safe enough to play into daze, but they just happened to draw it. So that's just fine. Oh, yeah, Steven, I saw the Hunter Burton uh, top eight. Um, what were you playing? Uh, I'm in Oklahoma. And a lot of my friends drove down to um, to Dallas and actually did fairly well. Some side event, good stuff and, and things like that. Okay, so the clock is on. Brainstorm. Okay, so... Let's see. This brainstorm actually could function really nicely to draw out the minor misstep that we know about, at which point we can really go off. So let's see if they, they take the bait. This is the first spell that I've cast where they can actually minor misstep, and they're going to minor misstep. Excellent. And now... Unless they have another daze as their one unknown card in hand, uh, we're going to be able to really uh, take this away. Now, this is going to be an ad nauseum. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we don't have we don't have the win right now. So eight cards in graveyard. This is three mana, and now we're gonna have six mana. And oof, boy, that's just that's just really nice to see. Um, I am gonna play the Reign of Filth. It's a pretty good idea. 
make sure this Infernal Tutor actually is Hellbent. Make a bunch of mana. Uh, wait, no, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, this is the thing. I am a little out of practice here. Uh, I can just tutor chain, which is something that the Epic Storm has a little bit of a struggle with because we play with Burning Wish, which you can't really chain. Um, or um, Wish Claw Talismans that are a little bit more expensive in the turn that you go off, but help in a lot of other ways. So we can actually just tutor chain, find an Infernal Tutor, an Infernal Tutor, and then the Tendrils of Agony. And this way, we're playing uh, really nicely. This is a nice clean turn four against Delver. Pretty nice, like it. Um, yeah, yeah, I like the tutor chains. I Man, these wheels are gonna, they're gonna get back. It's like riding a bicycle, right? All right? I hope so. So let's see, fluster storms seem good. Defense gr grid seems good. Silence seems good. Um, empty the Warrens also seems pretty good. So tutor chain, that was the way that I was gonna be able to build up storm. I needed an extra storm and that additional um, tutor was allowing me to build up that one storm. I had plenty of mana. I didn't need to worry about mana. I needed that storm. And playing Infernal Tutor into Infernal Tutor into Tendrils was that one extra instead of just grabbing the Tendrils of Agony at first. They were going to be at two life. So let's see. I like these five cards. Um, cards that I don't like might be Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Um... Might be Reign of Phil. A couple of these Preordains. And maybe a Cabal Ritual. Um, so this is a, a place I was talking about it last week in the Cephalid Breakfast video. I am not familiar with a lot of these decks. So while I can pilot in the game, a lot of the choices in sideboarding are where my knowledge is going to slip. Um, I know the cards that I want. Flusterstorm, Defense Grid, Silence are going to be great protection spells against the 5 plus Force of Will, Force of Negation deck. Four days is they're probably going to have some minor missteps in Flusterstorms or Spell Pierces or things like that. Um, I think that is going to be where I'm going. Ad nauseum is a little less good here. Uh, we're going in for a little bit of a longer game and they're gonna be clocking us a lot more quickly with cards like, um, you know, the, the Delver of Secrets, the, the Darcy's and the Merktide regions. They're an aggressive deck. Probably have only gotten even more aggressive actually to compensate for the lack of card advantage with expressive iteration. Um, Actually, maybe because of that, that seems... No, I'm good with this. I'll submit this. All right, and we'll see what our opponent does. Turns out they've chosen to play. Seems like a good idea. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep this hand. This Marsh Flats is gonna get a Scrubland, and we actually have all four colors, but base blue, base black is what we really want, so want. I'm going to keep saying that and giggle to myself every time. We are a little bit soft to a wasteland. Um, and they have the turn one Darcy. Uh, we are going to ponder. Hmm. That's not bad. I, I feel just fine with a ponder. Um, they can daze if they really want. Huh? <laughs> want every time um i don't want an another brainstorm i've got one i've got a ponder i i do want this wish claw talisman that is my avenue to a combo cabal ritual isn't bad either we have our protection already i think i'm gonna keep this no shuffle we have our second mana technically we could ad nauseum next turn right we could no, we can't. <laughs> it's right there. Um, I need to remember that. Mm -hmm. There's the wasteland. Okay. 
That is fine. Um, I would have liked them to not do that, but they can they can play the game with agency. That makes sense, right? Um, and their ponder, one card type away from delirium, and they have like the two of the harder ones, sorcery and creature. So likely they're going to have a delirium next turn. So the Cabal Ritual that we already knew about. Now I could get an Underground Sea here and cast another Ponder. Um, our opponent chose to shuffle with their Ponder. Um, hmm. Yes, Ave, Ave is amazing against Delver. I would love to have kept our hand with the knowledge that we have Ave in there. And actually your list shuffles has Ave in it. Um, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, you're also doing some other things in the sideboard that are kind of neat. They're a little different. Um, but I wanted to try out Prismatic Ending. Um, Brian, oh, a couple of lands. That's exactly what we need. Okay. I will prioritize um, Luta Delta as it can fetch anything that we want. Um, either basic, I should say. Uh, it also can hit any deck, any card in the deck. Um, whereas if I wanted the basic Swamp, Flooded Strand cannot get that. Uh, okay, so what are we saying? Lightning Bolt is aggressive. If I had an Ad Nauseum, mm, I would have already taken six this turn not looking super great. Um, okay. And step one card or one mana available. My cat is throwing a hit, a hissy fit. Um, I am imagining it's because there are squirrels outside. Uh, oops, this window right here. There's a tree that's right there, and uh, squirrels like to climb the tree and taunt him, and whenever that's a, a thing, he gets very upset. Um, so we'll see how long that goes. Uh, ending over Leyline Binding. Binding streams sick, strictly better. Uh, it is really not. Um, I need a lot of lands in play against a Wasteland deck to make Binding work. Um, and a lot of the, the things that I care about are going to be Chalice of the Void, uh, which is a zero drop. Um, uh, one drops for two drops. And I can do that off of two lands, whereas I'm not playing any kind of triomes or anything like that. So I would need at least three lands to be able to play a, uh, a Leyline Binding. So while that's really good in modern where Wasteland is not a thing, it's a little, a little harder to work with um, in Legacy. Okay, this, this looks really good. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I can put back Lion's Eye Diamond, which I don't necessarily need. I actually could just like, yeah, okay. So I don't have to shuffle. I kind of like everything, right? This is pretty good. Um, so I can Cabal Ritual and Thought Seeds. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's put Lion's Eye Diamond back and a Cabal Ritual. Um, I'm not going to shuffle with my Polluted Delta. I'll draw another Cabal Ritual. Now... I will get, I'll get and I'll get the swamp. I can't get the island. I won't want that. Um, this can get the um, tundra. So let's start off with a cabal ritual. Um, okay. Now I guess I could have cracked the flooded strand. I actually probably should have done that. I'm not used to counting my graveyard. Um, if I had cracked the Flooded Strand first, which is what I want to do anyway, um, 
I would have had threshold and they would have been forced to crack uh, to tap the unlicensed terse to limit my mana really should have done that uh wasn't thinking that one completely through um however i think that we will have it anyway so this thought sees might get minor misstepped days Let's see, how do I want to do this? They have two cards that I don't know about. So if I just silence here, they could have a bunch of dazes. I think it's the only thing that would really stop me. Okay, so they didn't do anything. Um, nine cards in hand, so if even if they Tap the unlicensed terse. I'm gonna get all of the mana that I need. I'm not gonna pay for days. I don't want to lose the two life. Fun little little thing going on there. Uh, they're at 19. So let's see. I think that we can just do another tutor chain here and call it good. Um, tutor chain. We don't really need to do that much of a chain, but this is a this is two chains, uh, so that's kind of neat. Actually, I should probably crack this one as well. Um, so let's get an Infernal Tutor. Cool, cool, cool. Infernal Tutor, and then the Tendrils of Agony. So we use the Wishclaw Talisman as the first tutor, Tendril, Infernal Tutor to get the second, because if we were to just get Tendrils of Agony right now, we would have a storm count of nine, which is gonna be 18 and they're at 19. So we needed one step in the middle to bump that storm up one more time. So awesome, put a win on the board, double tutor chain um, win against Delver. So that's felt pretty good. Uh, really, really neat. A little bit of a misstep I could have fetched to force the unlicensed terse activation. Um, and I didn't have to worry about that for the rest of the game, but I think that it worked out anyway. Um, just some minor minor misplay right there. Some sequencing that could have been a little bit better. Um, however, if you want to learn how to get better with Storm, and obviously I'm talking about the Epic Storm in particular, but a lot of this translates over. Uh, I haven't played Ad Nauseam Tendrils in a few years. And this is kind of like riding a bicycle. Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, Wish Claw Talisman, a lot of the same uh, repetition gets you uh, similar results, right? So if you want to learn about how to become a better Storm player, you can visit theepicstorm.com. And we've got awesome articles and things like that. And before we actually start this one, oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to run an ad. I was going to tell you about our website, but uh, this is Caleb Durward, and he's probably streaming, so they're probably streaming, and I'm going to um, kind of respect their time and make sure that they're not waiting on me too much. So I'm going to mulligan, and I'm going to keep this hand. Um, so Infernal Tutor and Tendrils of Agony, a little bit of a non-bow because I want to eventually find Tendrils of Agony, but I can't tutor for an engine card other than Past in Flames, which is where I'm going, um, with uh, with the Tendrils of Agony in my hand. Uh, Past in Flames gets around that, obviously, but I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna bottom the Tendrils of Agony. So, we'll see how that goes. Our opponent. Starts off with a Windswept Heath. I wonder if they're playing Maverick. Maverick, uh, won a challenge recently. Is that, oh, nope, never mind. Okay. Maybe this is the Bant Stoneblade with the, um, hmm, the boots that give you the initiative. I, I don't remember, I don't remember what's that, what that's called. Oh, Jason, Maverick is a, a base green white deck that plays cards like Knight of the Reliquary and, um, 
Green Sun Zenith and Elvish Reclaimer, and they seek to work really hard at playing a fair game well. Bant Painter, spicy MTG with a spicy info. Uh, cool. Unfortunately, Mycosynth Gardens becomes a copy of a non-token artifact I control. I would really like to be able to kind of mess with our opponent's work uh, with Mycosynth Gardens. It is the quintessential mid-range deck. You are correct, Jason. Okay, let's start off. I don't know if they're gonna be, I, I, I know that you, you have said that they're playing um, Painter. Uh, I'm going to still play around Wasteland in case they are doing something else. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Well, none of these cards really do anything other than the Nars set, so I'm going to take the Nars set. Hmm. Um, by the way, their most recent ponder chose to not shuffle. And there's that misty rainforest. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um. Okay. So they have four dead cards in their hand. Um, but I can't Infernal... T I would like to go, but I can't Infernal Tutor until I get this Mycosynth Gardens out of my hand. So we have to keep going. What is this? Is this a Hold Breacher? An Endurance? I don't know. I'd be the only one playing Bant Painter. As... Oh, oh, James. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You're the only person that uh, would play would play Bant Painter. Okay. They're just playing the dress down now. Yeah, that's not quite as strong of a combo deck. Otherwise, I would give it a shot here. Uh, it's just a little too prisony. Uh, I would I would think that that's a fun deck to pilot though. Um, okay, so let's play this ponder, figure out what's going on. Three brainstorms, not quite what the doctor ordered. Brainstorm, heck of a card, not what I'm looking for. Okay, they have two unknowns. Why do they have two? Oh, the dress down drew a card. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So if it was exactly force blue card, um, then fantastic. Good for them. But we actually get to do the Mycosynth Garden trick with the Lion's Eye Diamond, which was, by the way, an incredible draw. Um, So this is actually going to be a pretty straightforward past in flames kill. So Mycosynth Gardens taps to act or to copy a Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond's ability does not tap to activate. So what I can do is I can Infernal Tutor, sack this Lion's Eye Diamond for red, and sack this Lion's Eye Diamond for blue. I'm gonna get a Past in Flames. Past in Flames. And a Concession, excellent. So, uh, Ad Nos to play around Endurance. Ah, uh, you know what, that is a good idea. Um, probably should have done that, Shuffles. You're a little bit better at this than I am. So ideally in that case, then we would add nauseum with a 
bunch of mana floating. We're at 17 life. Um, we've gone through a couple of dark rituals and one lotus petal, um, and then one infernal tutor, I guess. But still, that's a that's good. Um, only activated at instant speed. So only when you can cast an instant. Um, I think is only as an instant. Okay, yeah. Um, same thing. Let's see. I'm expecting some number of um, to fairies out of this deck. I don't know if that's something that I necessarily need to plan around. Um, one thing that's kind of nice about this is there are only, well, I guess Wish Clock Talisman. So there's only 11 artifacts. Uh, this is significantly better against Collector Oof than decks that I'm normally uh, used to playing. Um, there's a specific reason, Jason, and I'm going to get to that as soon as I'm done sideboarding. Only cut two rituals. The Reign of Filth. Preordain. I think this is going to be very similar to how I boarded previously. Except I'm going to cut an extra Cabal Ritual instead of the Ad Nauseum. Ad Nauseum is a little bit easier on our, our... Our opponent is easier on our life total than Delver is. So I think that that's just fine. So um, Lion's Eye Diamond. It says as an instant because if you could activate it as a mana ability you could announce you are casting a spell and then use lion's eye diamond as a mana ability to pay for it um kind of weird rules ordering for how you cast spells it's kind of the same advantage that kci took when they were presenting a very effective infinite loop using kci to overpay for things you're not overpaying with lines a diamond necessarily but um i'm gonna keep this am i gonna keep this solid disruption i need to find mm, maybe i'm gonna mulligan this mm. <laughs> Four lands is quite a bit. I think I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep it for science, right? Um, I, I know that there's an old adage, never mulligan with ad nauseum tendrils. Uh, I think that that's generally false, but I want to see how far that... Oof, well, now it doesn't feel very good at all. Um, that's fine. I wonder if this is a minor misstep for this thought season. Brainstorm. Okay. Yeah, so the sequence of casting spells. Hey, there's that Teferi we were talking about. That is not a very good hand. So they, they hid some very good spells on top with their Brainstorm. Makes me worried. Because they kept that hand for a reason, and something tells me it's going to show up right now, and it's going to be a two-drop creature... It's gonna be a real pain. I don't wanna say it out loud because I don't want it to be true. Oh, okay. It did not happen. Protection. That's always nice to see. Okay. Another island. Are they going to get Savannah? Savannah. Narset. Uh, okay. That is a reasonable thing to hide, I suppose. We do have a lot of cantrips. Wait. Oh, they missed. Oh, they completely whiffed. That's nice. So it's a, it's a lock. It's a prison piece. Uh, oh, well, now it's a very good prison piece, but um, it's not the worst. Definitely not the worst. 
Hmm. Yeah, Platinum, I'm not going to jinx it. I'm not going to jinx it. Okay, Force of Will. Now we know at least one piece of interaction that we have to play around. Um, we'll have to see what happens. There's that snow-covered forest and the Uro. Okay. Two unknowns in hand. One. One known card in hand now. So three unknown. Okay. Cabal Ritual. Not bad. I will eventually have Threshold. Um, now, this is very different from the game that we were playing against Blue Red Delver. Well, that was Rug Delver. Um, and we're on turn five. I've only taken damage that I myself have... Um, supplied, I suppose, Blue Delta Thoughtseize. Uh, we've got an opponent that is sculpting their way into a win, uh, and they're presenting a six mana, or uh, a six six, excuse me, it's a four mana six six. So now things are going to start heating up, but um, it's been a little bit until the heat was turned on. They, they were able to kind of take advantage of our slow, slow start. Okay, no sense in keeping a, sh a shuffle effect for Brainstorm. Interesting. So this is gonna be a must counter. which they will. Force pitching an extra Uro. They have two cards in hand. So let's play the land. Get a volcanic island. Get our red. Okay, so this is six. We don't actually have enough to, wait, hold up. Do we? Uh, okay, so if we want to go balls to the wall, we can do everything. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is two mana here for the Infernal Tutor, holding priority, casting the Cabal Ritual, casting the next Cabal Ritual. Um, no, no, that doesn't work quite how I like it. Yeah, okay, no, we just have to go ball ritual right now. This is just gonna be one that does not have delirium. It's totally fine. The next one will. This one has delirium, unless our opponent endurances, but no, it does not. They do not. Okay, so we're gonna hold control with this Infernal Tutor. Hey, Spirit Squad, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to the stream. So, Brainstorm, no drawing off of Narset, but we need to be hellbent for Infernal Tutor to resolve favorably. Two cards in hand, and it was force blue card. Okay. Um, they went from a hand that didn't do too much. They had two cards off of the um, brainstorm, and they ended up with Narset, two force of wills. So that's just fine. Uh, well, the Narset, we had to play like that because of the Narset. Otherwise, I would have been able to just brainstorm normally and function um, with a very powerful brainstorm in my hand instead. 
threshold, not delirium. Raymond, you are correct. Yes. Delirium is the more common one. Not one that I need to concern myself with right now. Um, Darl, uh, you might be onto something, uh, being able to draw one card and put back some lands, but right now I'm actually drawing to, oh, Sylvan Library. Okay. I'm drawing to a Past in Flames and that is going to allow me to win. And I actually have two draws, not this one, obviously, but I can Orange Chant in my opponent's upkeep chant them and hope that they don't draw anything hmm we'll see how that goes just playing against TES oh that's pretty cool okay our opponent well actually let's see I oh uh, nope I don't have any cards in hand after the brainstorm. Okay, I'll concede this one. Let's go to game three. Um, hmm. Do I want anything in that's not already in? Do I want anything out that's not already out? Um, I can expect but potentially one or two copies of Wasteland. We saw Sylvan Library, so there may be a single copy of Life from the Loam. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much of that I should expect. Maybe I don't need to be playing around Wasteland. Uh, the second that I don't play around Wasteland is when I get got by it, but we'll have to see about that. I'd like to play first. Yes, I would. This is, uh, this isn't very good. I've got Infernal Tutor and Past in Flames, which are fine. Duress is a uh, disruption, which is fine, but this isn't really going anywhere. I'm going to mulligan this. It doesn't look super great. Um, this looks better. Um, this looks, this looks nice. I have Flusterstorm, Defense Grid, and Silence. I can put back one of those as redundant pieces of protection. And I think that it's going to be the Silence. It's either the Silence or the Flusterstorm. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Now I could wait on defense grid until I have fluster storm backup and that would be a way that I could resolve the defense grid but that's going to be late enough in the game that my opponent might have three mana available to force something that I play so silence actually might be able to make sure that they do that uh Darl yes absolutely okay so you we were getting to the same point um so this is gonna result, or this is gonna result in us relying on this brainstorm really heavily. Um, this brainstorm has got to deliver, but faith in brainstorm is why you're playing storm, right? Um, certainly, certainly a fantastic way to go. Okay. Hmm. I guess I just gotta do it. I'm not expecting a daze or anything like that. If I find a basic swamp and a lot to do. Okay, so I can put back silence and then defense grid. Next turn I can play the defense grid they'll likely have some kind of interaction at which point i can do one two three four five that's not enough um i still think that i'm gonna put back silence and defense grid play the defense grid next turn and then if not i have the silence for a protection uh later on we'll see how this works our hand actually has um, evolved really nicely. That brainstorm was 
Mm. Excellent. A brainstorm of our opponent, from our opponent. They are gonna figure out what looks best. Meddling Mage. That is a good one. Our opponent is smart enough to figure out what to name and really take us out. Yeah, Infernal Tutor will do that. Okay. So, as you'll see, Infernal Tutor has no highlighting. means that we can't cast it. But I can cast this Defense Grid. And you're almost certainly priced into countering it. Prismatic Ending might be something that they've kept in the deck. They've seen that this is Ad Nauseam Tendrils, though. Um, Prismatic Ending has significantly fewer targets against Ad Nauseam Tendrils than something like the Epic Storm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, it might not be something that they actually have in their deck. Teferi might be the only out for it. How do we kill Mage? Uh, we don't. Uh, from the, Yes, thank you on the Swamp. I, I did say in my deck intro that I'm really excited to play Ad Nauseam Tendrils because I can play some basics with some art that I really like. Um, the top four split in tonight? Oh, heck yeah. Dominic, way to go. TES represent. Uh, okay, so the silence that we already knew about We'll call that good. Uh, Goffman, this is a sideboard singleton grid, actually. Um, yeah, these are. I have a handful of these swamps in real life, and um, I like signatures. And Mike Blug's signature is like non-existent. Um, I actually don't even know if they're alive. Um, I haven't been able to find too much information. I haven't really looked about the basics. I don't. I don't really need to get basics signed all that much. the The basic that I have chosen is white bordered revised to match my dual lands. But once I get four and black border dual lands, maybe, um, then I can go to a black bordered swamp, which will be this. Okay. Now we are drawing live lines. I diamond. Not bad. Um, we're all rolled up once we draw a Wishclaw Talisman, or, I mean, we could technically go for, uh, like a, um, Past in Flames, Miracle Brainstorm kind of a situation, but this Meddling Mage is pretty good. Yeah, Black Saga, Saga Storm seems really neat, honestly. Um, a deck that I, I want to try out at some point. Null Rod. Well, there goes... There goes the silence. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not going to cast anything out. Um... Chidem, I don't deserve an alpha volcanic island. Uh, that's rude. Okay, discarded a needlessly complicated infernal tutor that I can't cast because I have been meddled with. Um, Null Rod the Marco True Hater. Yeah, it's a pretty good card against hating the epic storm uh or storm i guess so i don't have an out to this i didn't board in any of my removal um i was not expecting meddling mage i was expecting something like um collector roof some kind of null rod effect which ends up actually being pretty good here too not gonna lie but um Okay, we're just gonna die in three point chunks. Uh, we do need that Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, we don't have it protected though. That is part of the problem. And they have 
eight spells. Okay, and now we have it protected. Um, however, that does fetching actually turns our three turn clock into a two turn clock from our opponent. So we really need to draw something next turn. Otherwise, we're not gonna make it. Um, yeah, it's not gonna, uh, for those do, that don't know about the Alpha Volcanic Island, um, Volcanic Island wasn't actually printed in Alpha. It was a misprinted, uh, it was a it was a mistake. It actually didn't, act, it didn't make the, uh, the sheets. So there is no such thing as an Alpha Volcanic Island, which is why I think that I'm worth a Volcanic Island from Alpha. Keep that self-talk up, baby. Um, endurance. That's pretty good. Um, okay. So... I will... Fetch. Let's get a scrub land, I guess. Ooh. Uh, that's not gonna do it, folks. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, oh, wait a second. Can that do it? Our opponent is representing a force of will. So, we actually need eight mana here. Uh, if we had eight mana, we could natural tendrils with silence. Unfortunately, we do don't we have three four five six seven and that's two for the wish call talisman down to five one to activate down to four tendrils of agony with more than enough storm but we can't also silence so um oh yeah we can't activate oh my gosh uh, you know what i got so excited about all of this and it doesn't matter Man, null rod, null rod, null rod. It's, uh, y'all ever seen Stardust? Where the, um, Witch of the River, I can't remember, the kind of tubby ginger one, was cursed to not see the star, even if it was in front of her, couldn't be touched by it, couldn't smell it, couldn't talk to it, anything like that. Um, that's me with null rod. I can't see it, it's just non existent. It's going to affect me, but not, not on the battlefield as far as my eyes are concerned, apparently. Um, that's all right. Ooh, Goffman, Tendrils is a companion. That would be incredible. Uh, seven mana, just put three, three of it, put Tendrils in your hand and just do away with Burning Wish entirely. Um, crazy. That would be fantastic. So, if you want to become... I was talking about this at the beginning of the last round. Um, and then we paired into someone who was likely streaming, so I didn't want to take up a lot of time. Uh, yeah, Spirit Squad. It, it is literally Burning Wish. Burning Wish means that I, we have a, a Tendrils of Agony companion, and it costs two less. Or one less, excuse me. It costs two. Um... Oh, Stardust is amazing, Platinum Sticks. Uh, I watched it a week ago, and I usually watch it every year or so. Eh, whatever, I'm in the mood. Um, fan fantastic. Um, set of those IRL. Uh, the, the basic lands, um, let me show you. These basic lands are from the Euro Promo. Um, so the European Lands Program. Um, they also had the Asia Pacific Lands Program, or APAC. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the acronym is for, but uh, this is a a land that didn't, is about the the swamps in France. This is Venice, and they are actually lands that have real life counterparts. Um, there's a couple of the Asia Pacific ones. One of them is the um, uh, the Forest of the Dead, or I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, that's fine. Well, there's a Mount Fuji mountain, which is just drop dead gorgeous. Um, I think that those are really cool. I just like the, the Euro ones, uh, specifically the Swamp. 
the forest and the mountain are are some of my favorite. Now there are three of each um, that came in little packs. And if you were, um, there's some kind of a rewards program in the 90s where you could tutor some people and learn how to play magic and you got one of these land packs and they're really neat. Um, no, Jason, I haven't. I have specifically avoided wait, watching everything everywhere all at once until I can see it with specific people and we haven't been able to get together and actually watch it together. Um, somehow, I don't know that much about the movie other than the awards that it has been showered that have been showered upon it but um i've heard really good things i need to watch it it is just not something that i've done yet somehow eventually i will um sunflower planes is really good my planes i actually have like 20 of the um the the scotland planes uh really really fantastic um for my Death and Taxes deck. Don't tell any Storm players that I play Death and Taxes as well. I'd like to play first. Yes, I would like to play first. Okay. We're going to keep this hand. This hand is excellent. I'm going to start off on a Preordain. I am going to... This is a black source, so I can actually get the basic island here. Um... And these are all cards. You know what, I actually just want one of these. So I'm gonna top bottom. <laughs> wow, six times, that's impressive. I've rewatched a lot of movies. Um, things like um, My Cousin Vinny, obviously Stardust. Um, there's just some incredible movies out there that have either a lot of rewatchability or just nostalgic. Both, both are good. Uh, I'm gonna thought these are opponent. Spirit Squad, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Wasteland. We were correct in playing the basics. Something that the Epic Storm can't do, but we also lean a little bit harder into artifact mana, so we don't necessarily need to. Let's do the Brainstorm. Kind of look like Doomsday. Okay, I can put back the Infernal Tutor, and then the Brainstorm, and then the Polluted Delta. No shuffle. And then I think that we can attempt to combo next turn, depending on what this ponder gives us. Um, yeah, My Cousin Vinny, classic. In the Kareem household, we would watch it like twice a month at least. Just mm, chef's kiss of a movie. Uh, Marissa Tomei at her best, for sure little old Jordan. Poor guy didn't know what hit him. Okay, our opponent has a ponder. Um, and, uh, sorry, my cat is attacking my feet. Um, chooses not to shuffle their library. They have five, uh, two unknown cards in hand. Okay, let's try a brainstorm. Well, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so I can put back both Infernal Tutors, or can I... Hmm, it's probably, probably just Fine, putting back both Infernal Tutors and casting Ad Nauseam. I think that that's just fine. Um, let's do that. Unfortunately, no immediate protection, but that's just fine. Okay, 
hold control, add nauseum. I will crack for black. See what our opponent has to say about that. It resolved. And we get an orange chant for our problems. Troubles, excuse me. Past in flames. Uh, that should be... Oh, we don't have a tutor in the graveyard yet. Okay. That's fine. So we can keep flipping for a little bit. Um, but not much more. We'll go, we'll go to... Okay, we'll stop there. So now what we're going to do... Uh, is going to um, ritual out a bunch of this mana and then use all of our cantrips to find uh, the win because we don't have a tutor in there. So let's start off with a ponder. Oh, well, there it is. Didn't even need to do that. Uh, actually, we have this right here. We should probably chant our opponent. Okay, this is more than lethal. And we're all good to go. Turn three win against um, blue-white something. Blue-white control, blue-white standstill. I uh, don't know. Um, food Chain wins games. I don't know about Food Chain when it can play Food Chain. It uses um, creatures that you can cast from exile and um, makes infinite creature mana and I suppose wins games, but it's not a real big contender in the meta. Let's put it that way. Uh, this could be, hold up, this could be, no, we saw Wasteland, and Cephalid Breakfast doesn't play Wasteland. Okay, never mind. We have narrowed it down to not Cephalid Breakfast. Um, okay. Mm. You know, this is a red source and a black source away from doing things. Should I keep this? Our opponent has immediately mulliganed to six cards. Um, we have a ponder. We have protection once we find a couple of extra mana sources and a ponder to find. You know what? I think that this is going to be a keep. We'll try it, right? Trust in the heart of the cards. They've mulliganed to five. Part of me wonders if they have a one mana enchantment that I'm go not going to name that they definitely don't have on turn one. Whoops. Okay. Um, I don't have an out to this. Uh, yeah, we are not a Burning Wish deck. I uh, did not choose a Burning Ant list. So all of our outs to Deafening Silence are in the board. We are going to concede and go to game three. Um, not the greatest showing. Our opponent killed us on turn one very effectively. Uh, okay. So what about this? We take out the fluster storms. Bring in prismatic endings. Maybe we just need two prismatic endings. This is not a chalice of the void matchup. We are going to be able to cantrip our way into finding prismatic endings or wish claw if for a prismatic ending things like that we might just be able to get away with two alternatively the mycosynth gardens can go and we can bring in the other prismatic ending this is a card that goes fast and we're really not looking to go fast um i think that that's just fine the mycosynth gardens can act as our sideboard um, card for the third prismatic ending. I'm okay with that. I feel okay. And we can discard. Yeah, okay. Look at this. This is lovely. We can discard a 
um, deafening silence. They kept seven. Okay. Get, uh, I will get an underground C here. I need to thought seize now, and then I want to brainstorm later. They have a wasteland. Oh, they're a standstill deck. Look at that. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to wasteland me. I want to take the ponder. But if they, if I, hmm. So if I don't take the ponder, they're more incentivized to play the flooded strand and cast ponder, which means that they are less incentivized to cast or to play their wasteland and, and wasteland my underground sea, which is something that I don't want them to do. So I could take a brainstorm which I don't think that I necessarily want to do. Um, or I could take the standstill. So I think that I'm going to take the standstill and try to bait them into casting the ponder. Let's hope it works. We'll see. Nope. Just ripping it off. Okay. We need to draw lands. We did not. Ouch. I did like this hand for what it's worth. Um, maybe I didn't need to Thoughtsies on turn one to get a Deafening Silence out because I had the Prismatic Ending. This is all hindsight, but maybe, maybe I could have prioritized using Thoughtsies as a protection spell later on and prismatic ending to get rid of a deafening silence that they might have kept um i don't know i guess we'll never know can't go back in time yet okay there's a brainstorm do they have a different art brainstorms they do have different art brainstorms well in the in the words of patrick sullivan Kill them now! I am no Brian Cook. I cannot kill them right now. But I'll do my best. Um, am I going to get Tundra here? Open myself up to another wasteland? No. I'm going to get stable mana. I need to find another mana anyway. Didn't. Um, okay. So. I'll put back. Hmm. This Empty the Warrens is looking mighty fine. We need another mana. I can put back Infernal Tutor and a Prismatic Ending. No. How about... Yeah. How about I... They have five cards in hand. Um, that Ponder has been cast. They have cast a Brainstorm. Uh, they haven't shuffled, though. So... We know about the brainstorm and the planes. This isn't protection. Um, so if I put back the prismatic ending and the infernal tutor, we can think about what they do next turn and base our decisions around that. Prismatic ending, infernal tutor. There you go. Plateau and a standstill. I mean, okay. I do need to break that standstill. I can't function outside of, under it, I should say. So here's the question. Brainstorm? Lotus Petal. It's gonna be a brainstorm. We know that the top of our deck is the prismatic ending. I can't do anything about the standstill, I know. 
Uh, our deck just doesn't function. You have to play right into it and give them what they want. Uh, it does kind of hurt. However, we have found mana enough to potentially empty the Warrens next turn with a follow-up of Infernal Tutor. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Because that one will have Delirium. Okay, so let's put Infernal Tutor on the bottom so that I, if I need to activate a Lion's Eye Diamond to say pay for a Bluster Storm or something like that, I'm not discarding it. And then we'll draw the Prismatic Ending. Oop, I should probably play this land. Um, and it was a basic, so that's pretty nice. I hope that we get to punish them for their mismatched brainstorms. There's that planes. They have not shuffled from that brainstorm. Um, They're representing a lot of stuff. Okay. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, four, five, six. Let's do this. Whoops. Let's do that. Uh, Force of Negation. Okay. Well, that's fine. Because we have Infernal Tutor on top to try again. Now, they've got a lot of, they got a lot of cards in hand. Um, I guess I didn't need to sack the Lotus Petal. The first Cabal Ritual didn't need Threshold. Uh, to be decent. Yeah, maybe that was just a little uh, overzealous. Because the Cabal Ritual was going to be four, and then Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Cabal Ritual, Empty the Warrens was going to be more than enough to deal with everything that we needed to worry about. So I think that uh, that number of goblins was just fine. Probably should have considered... Uh, that's fine, we've got plenty of those. Um, probably should have just considered playing it out. No tricks to get threshold. Hmm. Five cards from our opponent. I don't know any of them anymore. I am going to just pass. We have the ability to play a long game if we draw correctly. They do end up getting a 1-1 a one, one and a 2-2 two, two if they um, activate Currency Converter, which they do. So 3 power, drew them a card. Hmm. Paying costs for a ponder. That's fine. Pop out graveyards. Everybody can see them a little bit more clearly. They chose to not shuffle and to play a wasteland and a deafening silence. Well, we have the answer to deafening silence. We do need to get more lands in play. Uh, the brainstorm is a good draw. It might hit a pyroblast. Nope. Okay. Well poopy. We're not drawing anything anytime soon. Uh, I think that this Empty the Warrens could get there more so than I think the Infernal Tutor can get there. 
So what I can do is put back Infernal Tutor and then Ponder, because I think that Ponder is going to be more important to us right now. And our goal is to win with Infernal Tutor. Is that even, or Empty the Warrens? Is that even reasonable? Um, or is Empty the Warrens just like not functional? Um, I'll answer that in just a sec, Greg. I think that maybe it's just gonna have to be Infernal Tutor and then put the ponder on there. Cause I wanna be able to dig for white source for this deafening silence. Um, maybe, I mean, I could attempt a win right now. I can make goblins. Uh, they have four cards in hand, and they chose to not shuffle. They probably found the deafening sound. Oh, yeah, I have the deafening sounds. I can't cast any more spells. That's right. Uh, got in my head thinking about that brainstorming. Okay. So their clock is really online now. Uh, I'm kind of glad that I didn't go with the empty the warrens. Um, they've got seven power already. This is a quick clock. Um, I, ca I cracked it for a red because I was going to empty the warrens uh, and the silence was not out at that point point. and they get to refill because I have to cl I have to ponder okay well that's pretty good for them or are you talking about a lion's eye diamond which was on the battlefield after the I think it was after the deafening silence might not have been Uh, this is not going to work. Actually, I'm just deterministically... Yes, uh, Goffman, I am deterministically dead. I found the white source. Can't do anything about it. Okay. Um, that's too bad. Didn't get to punish the mismatched brainstorms. Look at that. Um, just really couldn't find a third land to get everything done and potentially tipped our hand a little bit early by cracking a lotus petal to get our threshold for a cabal ritual that we really didn't we really didn't need um to cast and empty the warrens so that might have incentivized our opponent to count to counter the cabal ritual whereas before they might not have um but i think that this game was bar brought to you by not finding uh land number well four i guess they did wasteland us um, okay, so uh, set Greg. The Epic Storm feels a lot better, um, but th that is partially because I am better at playing it than I am Ad Nauseum Tendrils. Uh, the other thing about it is that I think that it is a little less linear, um, which could be a good thing, uh, could not be a good thing, but when your game plan can shift very quickly, um, then... I think that you have some certain you have certain strengths. Um, Burning Wish is a very powerful card. I don't have to have a lot of cards that I would bring in to deal with permanents that may or may may not be around. I can use Burning Wish as a sideboard with Prismatic Ending and Massacre and Pulverize, and I can keep my main deck as streamlined as possible. That also means that I have more outs in the main deck for game one situations against Chalice of the Void, um, which Ad Nauseum Tendrils is pretty cold to um, in game one. So let me tell you a little bit more about where you can read up on becoming a better pilot of the Epic Storm, but a lot of those skills transfer over and it's gonna actually be our website, theepicstorm.com and you can actually become a Patreon and you get early access to articles a week early. You get store discounts for our shop that has some cards and a mini token packs, which are really, really cool. I'll tell you about those a little bit later, but our, our website is an awesome resource. Um, and if you become a Patreon, patron, 
you also get access to our sideboard guide that's updated very regularly. Um, really, really cool perks and things like that that I'll tell you about right now. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. So I forgot to hit play league match, but that's fine. Um, Goffman is right. Past in Flames is not as reliable as it used to be with Force of Negation out. Um, it used to be that Past in Flames was really awesome at eating a Force of Will and then being able to be cast for flashback either immediately or the next turn to reload an entire graveyard worth of awesome cards. So Force of Negation made that a little bit worse. Uh, the other thing that made that worse is Endurance and also a format that currently has Cephalid Breakfast and Reanimator as top dogs right now in the legacy meta that incentivize people for, to play Graveyard Hate, whether it's Surgical Extraction or Leyline of the Void or Rest in Peace or whatever it might be. Fairy Macabre is actually seeing a lot of play because you can't counter it. Um, so that has a little bit less uh, power than it used to before. Hank the Obese. Okay, well, we are playing... Um, uh, probably some kind of initiative. Uh, Hank the Obese was actually uh, one of the front runners at Mono White Initiative. They were well known for playing Trinisphere in the main deck, uh, which was a real problem for storm pilots everywhere. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand as a potential turn one um, if we avoid the turn one Trinisphere. Let's try this. See what happens. This might be Gruel Initiative. This might be Winota Initiative. This looks like Snuff Out and Grief. This might just be Reanimator or Death Shadow. Snuff Out kind of makes me lean towards Death Shadow. Um, this is likely taking the Infernal Tutor. Also might take the Ponder or the Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Probably the Infernal Tutor, though. Uh, Pierre, uh, will Pair of Dice Lost uh, be legal on MTGO eventually? I think so, yes. Um, Daybreak Games, who now is the manager for Wizards of the Coast's uh, MTGO software, Magic Online. Um, oh, they took the Lion's Eye Diamond. Interesting. Okay. Um, I wonder if they're going to reanimate grief. Nope. Oh, this is my favorite island. This is the White Cliffs of Dover. This is another Euro island. Um, this is the one that I actually own in real life. Um, I own a few of these, and uh, this is my go-to. These are signed. Ben Thompson signs pretty regularly, and these are really cool. I like them a lot. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're, they're putting on to Moto, a lot of the cards that have not been, they have a backlog that they're dealing with that involves putting a bunch of cards like Paradise Lost, like the Initiative cards, like some of the Warhammer 40k cards. Um, hmm, you know what? That's fair. Um, putting them onto Magic Online. Wasteland. Excellent. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's not bad. I wonder if this is Doomsday. And they just didn't start off on a shock. Uh, not a sh not Doomsday. I'm sorry. Death Shadow. The other blue-black deck that has Grief and um, Ponder Days. Hmm. 
Hmm. They chose to not shuffle. Uh, Spirit Squad, I don't remember that at all. Whenever we were about to play Magic the Gathering, um, I didn't sign up for playing Magic the Gathering. I signed up for playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Uh, that's mean. I, I don't mean that. I actually am. Despite what this game in particular might, um, might say, I am enjoying myself. And at least their brainstorms are a good art. I, I like the Ice Age art with the weird man screaming as his teeth light up and his brain explodes. Um, watery Grave. Thoughts these? Yep. Yep. Theros Thoughts these. All right. Um, Malone, hello. Uh, yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, record up here is, you know, something. We're working through it. Okay. I am not super excited about this. I will pass. I'm ter maybe I maybe I really just need to ponder. Come what may. Um Well, that's a land, but that is not what we're looking for. The Mycosynth Gardens does not qualify. That will do. We are going for a Jun 5 oh, Jason. Yeah. Um, Baleful Strix. Okay. I will brainstorm. Four cards in, a, in hand for our opponent. Um, I don't think that... Mm, we're gonna like play more into Wasteland. I don't think that we can do that. Days, okay. And they picked up their shock land, uh, which means that they're going to be able to play. Oh no, they'll be at 13, so they can't play shadow yet. Thoughtseize means that they are going to be, oh, reanimate. All right. Yep, take what you want. Uh, brainstorm, makes sense. Stranding us with a bunch of nonsense cards that we can't cast. Um, Thoughtsy is not going to work out very well for us. Uh, this will be acceptable. Okay, put the Wishclaw, put the Lotus Petal, put the Pluto Delta, don't shuffle, play the Pluto Delta. Um... Yeah, we don't need much storm at all. You're correct. Hmm. That is a little bit of a dance between shadow and anything that deals damage. Um, but really, mostly things like burn, storm, Ad nauseum. That's the card that I don't think I wanted. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I want a lotus petal for what it's worth. I'll get the basic swamp. Rain of filth. Okay. Uh, taking four. Thoughtseize does change the clock. But I think that I need to Thoughtseize now because I don't think that I'm going to have 
a chance to do it later. Um, yeah. And by a chance, I mean mana. I'm not going to have the mana to actually do this later. So they have the shadow, which is taking our clock down significantly. So that's four there at seven. So that's an eight, eight. Uh, I don't think that we can do this in one turn. So I'm going to take the shadow as a way to kind of buy us one turn. And they don't have a blue card. They will need to draw a blue card. Technically, we have an orange chant, but we're we're light on mana. Oh, there we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We are one mana away. If we have, I would like to find a dark ritual. I think that that would be the best draw. Uh, yes, yes, we do need to cast the chant. But I was thinking that we were going to have to cast it um, like earlier. Like on our opponent's end step so that we would have the mana to do anything. But maybe, maybe that's not reasonable one two three four five six so a land does it if they don't have a force of will uh, a blue card to pitch a dark ritual will allow us to or a dark ritual or uh anything that's more than plus one mana will allow us to arms chant but i'm gonna draw to um, well, actually, no, I need to cast the Orm's Chant because that's the storm that I need. So, okay. Wish Claw. I don't think that that does it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wish Claw is gonna just be even on mana. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. They got me. Hmm. Let's get in the defense grid. Empty the Warrens looks really good here. Um, I don't think that they're gonna have any kind of hate permanent. Um, I don't think that that's something that we really need to concern ourselves with. Flusterstorm is great against Thought Seizes. Silence. We've been boarding like this against our blue opponents quite often. If we have more blue opponents, I might be considering a different board plan. Um, Yeah, we couldn't get LED, and actually, if we wanted to do that, getting Cabal Ritual would have been better. No, is that right? No, it would have been the same amount of mana um, either way um, with Threshold, but I don't think that it was... It was one short, I think. Yes, Goffman, one short. There we go. Oh, to discard the chant? Yes, but we didn't have any ability to do that. Uh, I would like to play first again. Um, okay. This is a lot of action, not enough mana. I am not super excited about mulliganing against the Thoughtseize deck, um, but I think that we need to. So I'm going to mulligan this. Uh, this isn't looking very good either. I can duress them. 
Uh, I could ponder. Yeah, Goffman, we've actually been like wanting to draw a land or be mana flooded in a lot of our games. I don't think that we've had too many games where we've hit like the, the, the exact middle ground where we've hit the number of lands that we've wanted. Uh, that could just be bias for me thinking about the ones that stung more. Uh, okay, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put back a Plotsies. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be the Thoughtsies. And then I'm going to ponder on turn one. I will get the island. Okay, those are good. Silence can go on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So, we can empty the Warrens next turn, which is actually pretty good. Um, Yeah, Goffman and Jason, yeah, a little bit more delicate when it comes to the fine tuning of each turn. Um, but I am I am a little bit more used to the Epic Storm, for sure. Okay, here I hope that they take something like the Duress or the Infernal Tutor. I do not want them to take the Empty the Warrens or the Lotus Petal. Now... Uh, the Mycosynth Gardens coming in clutch here is our red source with the island is going to function as our filtering and then Lotus Petal and the Dark Ritual that's on top of our deck will be the three extra mana that we need for the Empty the Warrens, assuming no other interference. Our opponent takes something like the Empty the Warrens, then we can use the Mycosynth Gardens as a black source and duress our opponent. Uh, yep. Okay, that's exactly what we're gonna do. They saw the writing on the wall, and ooh. Okay. Double, double discard on turn one. We are definitely duressing them now. Um, all right. And then we'll see if we need to play out the Lotus Petal to, you know, limit the effectiveness of uh, days. That's exactly why I'm playing out the Lotus Petal. Yep, this doesn't make two mana, it just makes one. Gardens, it, Gardens is a really cool design. I wasn't super excited about it in, um, oh, look at that, they did have the days. They have a wasteland. Okay, so if they wasteland me and thought sees me, we're kind of both in the dirt. I'm drawing a silence, which I really don't want, and I need some time to finish setting up. So I'm going to take this ponder, recognize that we're going to just be in the dirt for a while, uh, and it is storming outside, which is hopefully a really good omen for us and the last half of Goffman it's good to see you uh, nice chatting with you uh, I hope that everything works out well uh, infernal tutor that was the wrong order of things but we're all we're all heading in the right direction so have a good night. Hank is going to ponder. Mm. They're also drawing fairly well. Turns out the cantrip suite is a powerful suite of cards. I would like, I would like a ponder. Thoughts is, oh, reanimate. Ooh. 
Okay. Well, their clock has gone from 19 to uh, 5, I guess. Okie dokie. I would like a brainstorm, a ponder, an ad nauseum. Not an ad nauseum. There's a daze right there staring me in the face that I know about. Side diamond. I'll keep that. They are nearly dead. Just hitting a uh, main deck tendrils will do it now. Ooh, they shocked in. What do they have? Another grief. Okay. Okay. Tendrils of agony. We can silence and then tendrils them. Tendrils of Agony for the win. Nazis. Well, I can't cast that. Leave myself at one. Uh, ooh. Leave myself at one is the same as ten in this case. Our opponent is presenting a two-turn clock regardless. So if I go to eight, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Survive at one. Yeah, actually, I can thought seize them. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take. So. Hmm. I'm gonna take the days. Because if they top deck another blue card, they're not gonna have two counters. So take the days. Tendrils is still lethal off of the top. I have white source, black, black. We can do it. Nope, didn't get there. Really uh, drawing pretty sparse. I'll give him a little bit of fear cast the silence, and then concede. <laughs> okay. Hank won the match. Uh, I believe that they actually started playing Death Shadow before they, the initiative became a thing. Uh, we are one and three, hoping to get 50 play points, not one for this thing. Let's two, three this uh, in the last match. Um, not its greatest uh, showing. Orm's Chant would be nice, absolutely. It was the one of silence. We have we have two Orm's Chants in the main deck and we have one silence right there in the sideboard and we drew the silence instead, um, unfortunately. Okay, Coat 1993. Would you like to play first? Yes, please. I am pretty comfortable with this hand. Let's keep this, yes. Turn one, Flood of Strand for Basic, Island, and Ponder. They mulligan to six, though. Kind of makes me want a Thoughtseize. But I can brainstorm Thoughtseize next turn. Okay. Ponder into... A hand, a set of three cards that I don't want. Wish Claw is pretty good. Let's see what our opponent does. Whether it's going to be a brainstorm, Thoughtseize kind of a situation. Oh, this might be Reanimator. Yep. Grief pitching a Grizzle Brand. Reanimator it is. Uh, the 2 3 may or may not be in our grasp. 
We'll find out what happens. So this could be... This, they pitched the Grizzle brand, which... Uh, kind of cool artwork. I haven't seen that very often. Uh, and they discarded Thoughtseize. So this could be discarding Thoughtseize Brainstorm. I'm assuming that they're going to double grief us. Um, no. Interesting. Okay, do they have an animate dead? Or exhume of some kind? Or were they just going to second main? And it's red black. And tomb. Interesting that they did that now. But, okay. Archon of Cruelty. Uh, let's see. I need to put pedal to the metal. Doing that requires me to play out a Wishclaw Talisman, I think. So, prepping up for next turn. Uh, I can get anything our opponent isn't going to mess with our mana. It needs to be a black source. Scrubland. We'll get all three-ish, three, we have red technically, of our main deck colors in case I need to Orms chant them or something like that. Thoughtseize. I have two cantrips and the Infernal Tutor. I took the Brainstorm, seems reasonable. Are you going to take the Ponder as well? Or are you going to reanimate? Okay. Reanimate the Archon. I'm going to discard. Hmm. Okay, let's think about this. They're going to go up to 11. I'm going to discard the Ponder and hope to get lucky. Because this is... Reign of Filth is like plus one mana, uh, essentially, right now. Um, it would be plus two if I draw a land. Either way, um, we can see how this goes. Obviously, Reanimator, not the greatest matchup. Oh, okay. Well, that was really good. Two, three, four, five. Uh, not directly lethal. Um, is it? Actually, it is because we can tutor chain. Is that right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Infernal tutor, infernal tutor, tendrils. So LED is storm three. Infernal tutor four. Infernal Tutor, five, Tendrils of Agony, six, and that'll do it. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, crack for black, crack for black, and get Infernal Tutor. We get to Tutor Chain again. Pretty decent. And beat Reanimator in game one. Um, nifty did not think that we were going to come back from that I am pretty excited about that okay let's do some chain of vapor things let's do some surgical extraction shaped things um, we want to go fast reign of filth was really good preordain not fast um, do we want anything else? Do we want fluster storms? Fluster storms are good against their discard. It's not that good against discard. Actually. Fluster storms are in a maybe list we'll make over here. Um, what's bad? I like all of our discard. Forms chants aren't like the worst thing in the world because they can kind of silence walk our opponent just like they do in the epic storm mycosynth gardens is pretty good i can take out actually you know what i'm going to do i'm going to take out the um the basic island 
Um, that is not necessary. Our opponent is not going to be um, attacking our mana base. Do I want to find spots for these Fluster Storms, or am I good with the Orms Chants, which are going to be like the two things that may or may not swap? Um, do I think that being able to silence walk our opponent is more important? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that these are going out as well, and I'm going to sideboard in the fluster storms now i do have mismatched fluster storms i only want own one of the commander and i'm renting the matter the modern horizons so it's not at its best <laughs> i do think that fluster storm is going to be better than orm's silent uh, orm's chant i think it's close um They kept seven. So this is very reactive. I think that we need to mulligan to a uh, more interaction. Well, this is not. This has the duress, but we have the power to be explosive if necessary. If we find exactly one of our tutors, one of our seven tutors, and we have the ponder to do so, I think that this might just be something we have to keep. Uh, I don't think that going to five is going to be good. The likelihood that we get discarded is pretty high. I don't want to start a game on four with our worst cards being the cards that we keep. Not the worst cards. We keep the best five, and then we are handed the, the worst four of the five, I guess. Also, they just didn't do anything, and we drew Surgical Extraction. Okay. Good, good stuff. Duress, Force the Entomb. Um, I'm assuming that this is an Entomb. Uh, Darl, this, yeah, okay. So they get to Entomb, and we drew the Surgical Extraction. Uh, Sarah's Emissary, yep. Okay, so we're gonna, they have the animate dead. Um, they don't have an additional land, so they can't duress us. What I can do is I can force them to animate dead, sacking their Lotus Petal, and they're stuck Faithless Looting for A and B and I have some time to ponder into some action. Or I can take the animate dead and they're, forced, they're priced into duressing us. And I surgical extraction anyway, uh, and they take my ponder. I don't like that. So I'm gonna take the duress. Now, we'll see what ends up happening. Lotus Petal. Yep, there's the Lotus Petal. Animate dead. I will surgical extraction. I mean, obviously they don't have anything. They drew a Grizzle Brand, so they already have a... Uh, let's take a look at this deck. I'm actually going to screenshot this. Um, they have four Griefs, three more Grizzle Brands, a Chancellor, three Archons. Okay, so let's see. Two Duress, three Thoughtseize. Interesting. Uh... Okay. I'm going to take this one. <laughs> okay, so we've got a little bit of time. I'm so glad that the surgical extraction actually shows the revealed 
cards now. That didn't used to be the case. I should probably shuffle just in case I like everything. Um, Tundra, Volcanic Island, Scrubland. Let's do the double ponder. Do I want red or do I want white? We don't have any white cards, so Volcanic Island it is. Chain of Vapor, that's pretty good. Um, I don't think that that's good enough to keep any of this. Is it though? It might be. I have another ponder. No, I'm just gonna shuffle this. Thoughtseize, not bad. I can Thoughtseize a Faithless Looting. Or I can thought seize next turn when they're allowed to faithless looting. Okay. Hide the wish claw on top. Grab the fluster storm. No shuffle. Now I have two ways to interact with them uh, if they draw a discard spell of some kind. And then I'm all rolled up with an ad nauseum next turn. There's a faithless looting. And actually, I might... Eh, I probably shouldn't wait. Okay, there's the Grizzle Brand that we know about. Do they just have the reanimate right now? Okay, Thoughtseize. Sure. One less storm. Our last card in hand is Faithless Looting. And we're going to be able to add nauseum with a land drop. There's our revealed zone. Can get rid of the graveyards right now. Don't need those. Add nauseum with a land drop at 16 life. From 16 life, I should say. Okay. Luta Delta. Scrubland, there's our land drop. Infernal Tutor, that's our route to victory. I need to pair that with one of the two remaining Lion's Eye Diamonds, though. Lotus Petal is good. Past in Flames. We don't really have very many things that we can flash back with Past in Flames. Another Lotus Petal. Tendrils of Agony. So, not looking great. Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, okay. We are getting there. Um... So this actually will work out really nicely because what I can do is I can Infernal Tutor for a Cabal Ritual, um, sacking the Lion's Eye Diamond to actually make all of that work. Uh, I don't have any fours though in my deck. Empty the Warrens is gone. Past in Flames and Tendrils are already out. So I can repeat. Uh, I don't have any threes either. So I'm gonna repeat until I get to two. And I will stop there. Play out a Scrubland. I will play this Reign of Filth. Uh, sack. This is this should be lethal. And one of the nice things that I don't get to do very often with the Epic Storm is win with no permanence in my library or in my in my battlefield. There we go. Those are the words. Go back a couple of lands. Um, we can actually also do this with no hand, I think, um, at all. But we can just, we can stop showboating and, and kill our opponent. That will do. We don't need to try to get to any kind of specific game state. Don't need to do that. We're just gonna we're just gonna take the game. And the match. So a little bit of a disappointing two three. Um, we were playing up against some blue opponents, Stand Still and Death Shadow. Death Shadow to be fair, has a pretty good combo matchup. Uh, combo does not do well against the Thoughtseize, Force of Will, Quick Clock. Um, so 
not bad. We get 50 play points for our troubles, but not exactly what I would want out of a league, uh, especially streaming with all of you, but that's fine. A couple of things that I would want to change. I boarded out these preordains almost every single time. Um, I don't think that these preordains need to be here. I think that they're now, granted, I am not familiar with the sideboard plan that was in mind when this deck was constructed. Um, but a couple of things that I would look to change are preordains and potentially the duresses. Um, these were automatic includes for the deck list uh, that I was excited about because of nostalgia when I was playing Ant several years ago. Um, I was really excited about playing Duress and Preordain again because it doesn't happen in Legacy. They're not very good cards. I just wanted to try them out. I am less sure about the Duress right now. That actually is not like the worst thing in the world. Preordains need to go. It is, it is not the time for Preordain anymore. Now, if you want to play it in Vintage, Preordain is great in Vintage. You should be playing more Preordains in Vintage um, Tinker Breach. But I digress. Uh, the Reign of Filth actually ended up coming in clutch a handful of times. It was a little bit win more. Uh, well, it actually simplified our win in the last game against um, Reanimator. I didn't need to go through the whole Infernal Tutor, Sack, Lion's Eye Diamond, Find Cabal Ritual, Flashback, Past and Flames, Ritual, Ritual, Ritual Tendrils. Um, Reign of Filth just provided enough mana. But that nice boost of mana in a later game situation uh, actually could be really nice. The Mycosynth Gardens came up exactly once. It was important. Um, it allowed us that extra boost of mana to be able to actually win. Um, both of these cards, like Reign of Filth and Mycosynth Gardens, have different timings, but they both provide boosts of mana when you need it the most. Mycosynth Gardens comes in early, and that's when you want to combo fast. A Reign of Filth is going to be that extra boost of mana after turn three or something like that, where it's making a plus two mana or something like that. So the Past in Flames deck. Surprisingly, we didn't cast Past in Flames all that often, but I think that it is not as powerful as it used to be. We were talking about things like Force of Negation. We were talking about things like Endurance, the the graveyard-centered metagame that we're in right now with Cephalid Breakfast and Reanimator and things like that. Um, Past in Flames decks do kind of get a little bit of that hate um, associated uh, by just being another graveyard deck. Um, but I like the Orm's Chance in the main deck. The Silence in the sideboard not being an Orm's Chant was a little rough. Uh, but I think that I like the split because of Surgical Extraction, which actually ended up being really good against Reanimator. Uh, we drew it in the most clutch time ever. After they could have discarded it, we drew the Surgical Extraction, got rid of their Sarah's Emissary, and was able to buy enough time to ponder into that Ad Nauseum win. Really, really cool. Defense Grid against Control. Uh would have been really nice if we were able to draw land three um but we were not that was just really rough um something i haven't talked about at all is the absolutely incredible number of sideboard removal spells um but that's going to be something that we can discuss later overall i had a lot of fun kind of returning to ad nauseum tendrils I am no Cyrus Corman Gill. I am no Yokel or Shuffles the Drummer or any of the, the really lovely people that are devoting a lot of time and effort into this deck. And I could feel that even though the same combo muscles are being practiced, I guess, they're being, they're being flexed, uh, there's a lot of fine tuning that switching from the Epic Storm to Ad Nauseam Tendrils um, doesn't really convey so i'm gonna leave that here i had a lot of fun i'm glad that you guys did as well i enjoyed chatting with you all please if you are enjoying this kind of content like the video comment on it 
subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can even become a YouTube member if you really like to. That extra little bit a month uh, goes a long way to actually showing that you are um, supporting this channel in a way that financially matters and you get some really cool perks. You get some awesome emotes, you get access to videos early at all tiers and there's just some some really cool benefits that if you're interested you should check out. Other than that, I'm going to leave it here. White ad nauseum tendrils. Girls just want to have fun and I had fun too. White ad nauseum tendrils. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.